probably my favorite part of iSTEM is the fact that we get to do group projects with others that are interested in what we're doing. So we get to come together as a group and think about what we want to do, how we want to achieve it, and use different strategies that we have learned to complete it effectively. Since everybody chose to be in this program and everyone is passionate about what we're learning, everybody wants to help and wants to do as much as they can. You get like different perspectives and stuff. Like you might like be thinking a certain way, but like everyone else is thinking differently. So you get to see like uh, different opinions and stuff. The design challenge they're participating in is actually the one my first year students participate in, uh, and it's. Uh, it involves inviting a local person, a client, into the classroom for whom the students design. And this year we had uh, a woman who was actually a mature student at, at McMaster University with uh, primary generalized dystonia. And their job, my student's job, and uh, the students I think here at uh, iSTEM are essentially tasked with designing something uh, that could help her with some of the, uh, the movement dis uh, problems she has due to the dystonia. Because the four subjects that are math, science, tech, and geography are so correlated, you have the opportunity to solve a number of different problems in a variety of your own ways. You learn more and when you're older and want to become an engineer, you have to have all four subjects anyways, so it's preparing you for our futures more. Companies are looking for people to be placed in roles where people really are needed. Uh, and one of those areas is in solving complex, open-ended, and unstructured problems. The project the students are doing here, or did here with the iSTEM, is a good first step in starting to learn how to deal with those complex, open-ended human problems. We get to look at real-world issues like our Ravine project. It's not something that we would have done in a normal high school scene. The ravine project is there's basically a ravine behind the school and uh, the problem is it's eroding at an unnatural rate so it's eroding a bit too fast. The ecosystems are really not doing well because of the erosion. All the roots are exposed, the trees are falling down, it's just not even looking nice and the pollution that kids throw back there. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to find a solution to the erosion problem so we're trying to make it erode slower at a, at a more natural rate. There isn't a fixed answer, there isn't a right answer at the end. Uh, they need to make their way through a lot of uncertainty and amb ambiguity, and there is plenty of room for failure through a project like this. I think my favorite part would have to be our model rocket project. Um, at the start of the year, we started looking at prototyping, so we started by making paper rockets, then we worked our way up to bottle rockets, and then we did a combustion rocket. We did learn the tech behind it, the chemistry behind it, and I liked it because it wasn't just sitting in a classroom learning, it was that opportunity, and I find it much easier to learn things when it has a purpose. I think the most important piece of advice that I could give a future iSTEM student is you have to be passionate about these STEM subjects and you have to be able to see a future for yourself with a STEM related job or profession because if you're in this program it will be your future. <laughs>